Welcome to D-Lab. As you guys know, I fix a lot of ham radio equipment, mostly tube type. I've dabbled with the Kenwood hybrids, but I've never taken on these full digital units like the Kenwood 440. But what's always intrigued me is the stories about the dot display issue. So I've been searching for one of these units so I can try my hand at repairing it, but I could never find one in good shape. Well, I've got one. They have a really nice condition 440S and it has the dot problem. I've read that it could possibly be just simple bad connections. It could be some kind of an adhesive goop that they put inside of the oscillator section on one of the circuit boards. Let's hope it's not that. But anyway, I'm going to investigate the problem. Let me show you what it's doing and let's see if we can fix it. All right, here is my nice clean TS440S with the dot problem. You can see if you tune, the display will come up, but then it will drop out. You can change bands. But even though you see that display, there is no intelligence, very low audio. Textbook problem. Here it is, the Kenwood TS440S. This one has the optional CW filter installed and the auto tuner. When I took the top off, I noticed the screws for this platform were already gone. So somebody's been in here looking around. Right now, I don't see any evidence that anything has happened to it. Let's hope for the best. So it was really nice that Kenwood made these swinging panels to give you access to the boards underneath. This is the PLL board. I've seen pictures of it, and these little cavities are full of adhesive but this one is not that way however I was inspecting this unit and I got down in here and I looked really close and I could see evidence that somebody has been prodding around in there it looks like they're trying to scrape out adhesive let me get in closer so let me show you what I see right here in the center it's a little cavity with a little tin frame around it if you look in close, you can see some scrape marks, you can see some adhesive on those components. So I believe that somebody was on to fixing the fault, but just didn't go far enough. So what I'm going to do is my typical take a plastic wand and prod around in here and let's see if we can make that display come to life. So I got my finger down in that cavity there's no hazardous voltages I'm just gonna move things around a little bit I can actually see the components which you can't but I want to see if there's any sensitivity I see a little green coil here electrolytic capacitor nothing yet Ooh, look at there all of a sudden we have audio See if we've got anything down here on 40 because that's the antenna I got hooked up. She's back to the dots. Right there. Well, I don't hear any people talking, but I also have audio. There's something loose. I'm moving it back and forth right now. Okay, I did find several bad connections on that PLL board. Some of the leads, you can see the cracks right around them. So I've touched that up. The dot issue is gone. The dot issue is fixed and the radio is performing great. The audio yeah, sounds superb. It's something with an Oscar in it. Oscar Romeo Sierra. Okay, that's, I believe that's Chris, if I think. Roger. Okay, then I have a station with a, uh, with a, uh, a Q in it. Who is that? November Charlie Quebec. November Charlie Quebec. And then I had a, what's that other silly looking thing I wrote down? I got Uniform Golf Oscar. Then I had Tango, Tango, Papa. Uh, Very clean 
TS440S.